The progressive rock movement at the end of the 60s finds its roots in the psychedelic sounds of 1966, spearheaded by trailblazing albums like Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, Revolver by the Beatles, and the debut releases of Jimi Hendrix and Kareem. A distinction should be made, however, between psychedelic rock and progressive rock, as psychedelic rock, aka acid rock, is really a genre of its own. The music of California bands like The Doors, Love, The Seeds, Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, Frank Zappa's Mother's Intervention, The Blues Magoos, and Moby Grape were, at the time, deemed psychedelic as a new experimental kind of rock music exploded during 1967's infamous Summer of Love. For more on the development of psychedelic rock, check out Lenny Kay's essential compilation, Nuggets, Original Artifacts of the First Psychedelic Era, 1965-1968. through America's Vanilla Fudge scored a huge hit with 1967's acid-drenched cover of The Supremes' You Keep Me Hanging On. Though their debut marked a milestone in psychedelic and progressive rock music, over time the band has been overshadowed by the more significant contributions of their contemporaries Jimi Hendrix and Cream. Progressive rock as we know it flourished across the pond in the UK in 1967, led by the Moody Blues, Purple Harem, Pink Floyd, The Soft Machine, Genesis, Jethro Tull, and The Nice, followed in 1968 by King Crimson and Yes. This track, A Whiter Shade of Pale from Purple Harem's debut, was released in September 67 and was a mega smash hit selling a mind-blowing 10 million copies. The band's follow-ups, the brilliant albums Shine On Brightly, A Salty Dog, Home, and Broken Barricades, all feature the stellar guitar work of Robin Trower. I was feeling kind of seasick The crowd called out for more Nights in white satin the Moody Blues followed in November 1967 with the release of their groundbreaking LP, Days of Future Past, which featured the monumental hit, Nights in White Satin, written by guitarist Justin Hayward while still a teenager. The song reached number one in the UK and number two in the US, selling over a million copies in the US. The dreamy nature of the music combined with the use of classical string arrangements forebore the classical strains favored by the progressive rock music to follow. I can't say anymore Cause I love you King Crimson, led by enigmatic guitarist Robert Fripp, formed in 1968 and featured bassist Greg Lake soon to leave Firmish and Lake and Palmer. Crimson's debut in The Court of the Crimson King was released in October 1969 and hit number five in the UK. In the words of the Who's Pete Townsend, this disc is nothing less than an uncanny masterpiece. A landmark in progressive rock music, the band combines rock with classical, jazz, and symphonic overtones. Jethro Tull formed in Blackpool, Lancashire in 1967, and their unique combination of blues rock, jazz fusion, 
Celtic Folk and Classical Strange placed them as forerunners of the late 60s progressive rock scene. Led by flautist and multi instrumentalist Ian Anderson, the group featured the incredible Glenn Cornick on bass and Clive Bunker on drums. Following their debut, this was original guitarist Nick Abrams left to form Blob and Pig, was replaced by Martin Barr for the seminal second album, 1969, Stand Up. Upon its release, the record went straight to number one. When tension starts mounting and you've lost count of the pains you missed Just try hard to see why they're not worrying me the last on my list Yes, formed in London in 1968 with singer John Anderson, bassist Chris Squire, guitarist Peter Banks, keyboardist Tony Kay, and drummer Bill Bruford. Steve Howe replaced Banks in 1970, recording their breakthrough smash, the Yes album, with them in 1971. An accomplished acoustic and classical player, Steve Howe is regarded as one of the greatest progressive rock guitarists of all time. The band's fourth album, Fragile, was released in November 1971 for on the FM radio hits Roundabout, Long Distance Runaround, and Heart of the Sunrise. It also includes Howe's beautiful solo acoustic piece, Move for a Day. The album went to number four in the U.S. and has sold over two million copies. Lake and Palmer is one of the most successful prog rock bands of all time. With an estimated 48 million records sold worldwide. Formed in London in April 1970, the band consists of keyboardist Keith Emerson, formerly of the Nice, singer, bassist, guitarist Greg Lake, and drummer and percussionist Carl Palmer. Their eponymous debut was a smash on both sides of the Atlantic on the strength of the hit single, Lucky Man. The three brilliant musicians demonstrate their prodigious talents on every release. The band's sophomore effort, Tarkus, is an essential landmark in the development of progressive rock. Just a step across the sand.
When Pink Floyd released 1973's Dark Side of the Moon, its impact on rock and pop music was monumental. The group's eighth release, it had sold over 45 million copies worldwide and it remained in the top 100 chart for an astonishing 950 weeks, which equates to over 18 years. With standout tracks like Breathe, Us and Them, Time and Money, it's widely considered as one of the greatest albums in the entire history of rock. Bands like Genesis, Yes, Pink Floyd, King Crimson, Jethro Tull, and Rush would go on to dominate rock music through the 70s and 80s with multiple worldwide million selling. Other essential classic prog rock bands are Gentle Giant, Family, Renaissance, Vandegraaff Generator, Coliseum, Gone, Tempest, Camel, and Caravan. With standout guitars like Andrew Latimer, Gary Green, Ollie Halsell, Alan Holdsworth, Pie Hastings, Steve Hillage, Phil Keggy, and John Goodsaw. Progressive rock would continue to morph and develop through the decades, and the genre is still thriving today. For History of Rock, this is Andy Allendale.